417. Wow, April, love it. 417, 19. Okay, so what we're going to do today more than anything is we want to talk really about this thing called the hinge, the hinge theorem, which is super easy. What you guys are going to love about geometry is the fact that it's pretty much common sense. So, okay, you ready? Just watch. It's super easy, okay? As the, as the hinge opens up, what happens to the opposite side? It gets smaller. The nut cracks. It gets bigger, right? As the hinge opens up, the opposite side gets bigger. Does that make sense? It's bigger. Well, the opposite side. It's invisible. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, okay. See, it's invisible, right? Here, see this? It's just, I mean, just so the bigger the angle, right? So a lot of geometry is pretty much common sense. There's a little piece, though, that can be confused on on the back side. But let's start right up here. Larger angle theorem, okay, says this, that the largest angle, this has to do with the triangle, triangles, triangles, the largest, largest, sorry, you guys, largest, the largest angle is opposite the longest side. Try any triangle. This is pretty obvious, right? So find a compass and draw a triangle ABC if A is 6, B is 7, and C is 8. So I'm going to do that real quick. Let's see if I can find a compass out there. You guys don't need to. I'm going to draw it. So if I grab a compass and a ruler, I'm going to show you how to do this. Compass. Okay, are you guys watching? So I'm going to draw this. Well, let's draw this one eight, eight centimeters right here. I'm going to draw this one eight centimeters. Okay, you watching? Eight. This one's eight. Now, so if I want to draw the next one, six. Focus. So if I want to draw this next one, six, right? This is eight. The hard part is where does it go? Does it go there? Are you watching? Does it does it go there? Does it go there? And then if I have to draw the next one, seven, you know, does it does it go there? Does it go there? Okay. So I'm not sure. One easy way to do it. Oh golly. Okay. Is. I did it. Okay. If I do this with my compass, watch how I do this. Okay. I go six. Check it out. So you got six right there. You guys see I got six right there? And if I do this, this entire arc is six, isn't it? Yeah. This arc, entire arc is six. And then if I do this one, seven. Oh, it's really intersect. Yeah, and that's a sweet way to do this. If I do this one like seven, all right, that's seven, right? So that means that this entire arc is seven, right? Right there. Right, and this is such an easy way to draw this because then if I draw this one in, this one's definitely seven. In fact, I, I'm sure it's seven, right? Because I just did it, right? There's seven. It works. What do you know? Wow. Okay, and then this one's definitely eight. No, I'm sorry, not eight, but six, right? And it is, right? So here is my seven and my six, okay? Now, if I measure the, the angles, let's see, do I have a protractor around here? I do have a protractor. So if I measure my angles, yeah, Derek. It doesn't try. It doesn't work. That you would think that would work, but it doesn't. Yeah. That, I mean. So let's check this out. If I measure these angles, I don't know. Let's see. This one's about. Oh, I don't know. Maybe fifty-seven degrees. Can you see fifty-seven degrees? Can you see that? I think it's about fifty-seven degrees. If I measure this angle, mm, yeah, let's see. This one's about. 49 degrees, maybe? And if I measure this angle, this one's about, let's see where I'm at, 78 degrees, maybe? Wouldn't it be just perpendicular to the other 
Right, and I know 180, yeah. So if I look at this, this, this exactly worked out the way I was hoping it would work out. The biggest angle is opposite the biggest side, right? And, and I made it. I measured it. I made it so it had to happen, right? And the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side, right? Um, right? So it actually works. But we don't have to draw it perfectly. In fact, I guarantee you on my test on Friday, I guarantee I will draw it so bad that you can't get the answer by looking at it, okay? I promise. I've brought it horribly. When you look at it and say, tell me the biggest angle, you'll go jumping right to the one that looks the biggest, but it might not be. Look at the numbers. So I apologize for being a bad artist, but the math, biggest angle, opposite the biggest side. Smallest angle, opposite the small side. Isn't that easy? Okay, now, list the angles from smallest to biggest. So let's call this, if this is, ang if this is side B, this is angle B. Yes. Yes, if this is side C, then this is angle C. And if this is side A, then this is angle A. So this is little a, this was little b, and this is little c. So we label angles by the opposite. If this is side a, that's angle a. If this is side b, that's angle b. It has to be the opposite. Sides, not So this is side c, that's angle c. Okay, so list the angles from smallest to largest. Well, that's going to be, let's see, the smallest angle is angle a. Then angle b. And then angle C, right? Okay. Now, triangle inequality theorem. Before we go ahead and look at this, I want you to look at this example right here. Okay? I want you to look at this example. Am I going too fast? Make it quick. Okay, I want you to look at this example. So if I try and draw this triangle, let me see. If I try and draw this triangle, before I even try and draw it, can someone intelligently tell me why I can't draw this triangle? Because it doesn't equal... A squared plus B squared doesn't equal... No, no, I'm not... Two plus two doesn't equal... What would you say, Max? I was going to say they didn't... I don't know, I lost my train of thought. I think you're on it. Derek? There's two smart sides. Right, if we just hypothetically tried to draw this thing, let's say I just tried to, if this is 17, just imagine this being 17, okay? And this side's 3, this side's 12. Do you see a problem? Can't be a triangle because, like Derek said, these two added together have to at least be 17. In fact, they have to be bigger than 17 because they're exactly 17. They'd close down and be a straight line. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the inequality, triangle inequality theorem says this, that any two sides, the sum, says the sum of any two sides must be greater than a third side. So if I take a look at the second example, and we can draw it, it doesn't make sense. If you draw this, there's no way that's going to be a triangle. You guys agree? It's not going to be, it's not going to, it's not going to touch. But I also know that 12 plus 13, if I go, I'm sorry, 3 plus 12 is not greater than 17, right? It's not. I mean, I said it's greater than, but that's, that's false. I mean, that's 3 plus 12, that's 15. 15 is not greater than 17. That doesn't work, right? No triangle exists. Now, the first example, let's see, 5 plus 6, that's 11. That's buildable, right? 6 plus 10, that's 16. That's bigger than 5. And 5 plus 10, that's bigger than 6. So this triangle is buildable, OK? It definitely is. Because if I add any two, if I went, say, 5 plus 6, that is greater than 10. I went 5 plus 10, that is greater than 6. Or even if I went something as crazy as 6 plus 10, that is greater than 5. So any combination, any combination. So if I can add them and they're bigger than the third side, it'll work. You could try and draw it, right? So this one's yes, this will work, OK? Yes, we can draw that triangle, right? 
This one's no. How about this one? This one's not going to work. Has to be greater than. Because if you were to draw this, just if, like figuratively, here's 11, and you had a. If you had an 8, and if you had a 3, it would collapse and make a straight line. Does that make sense? They would connect. They connect, and you'd have a straight line, but not a triangle, right? Wouldn't it be true if you were doing 11 plus 3? It would be true, but it has to be greater than all of them. So, yeah, if we go through, it has to be any, the sum of any two, right? And that's where that, that works right there, yeah. And you can see if you draw a picture, this is not going to work. You guys agree with that? There's no way. So a lot of geometry is really obvious. You guys agree? Draw a picture. Anytime you do geometry, draw a picture, and you can do it, okay? All right, moving on. So that's no. That's a no. All right. right. Okay, now, the hinge theorem, okay? The hinge theorem, okay? So the hinge theorem is going to say that, oh, gosh, let me get exactly this. It's out of our journal. I want to get it right. Let's take a look at it on page 220 because I'm going to mess it up if I don't have it exactly say right. what you think it is. Well... Here is the hinge theorem. If two sides of one triangle are congruent, okay? If two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle. So if this side's equal to that side and this side's equal to this side, okay? Now it's actually pretty obvious. Okay, this side's equal to this side. You guys see that? So VW is congruent to RS. And Vx is congruent to Rt. All right. Now, if what? Derek, say that again. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Is it on the on R Oh, I see what you're saying. This should be one line here. Yes. Thank you, Derek. That is my mistake. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect. Okay. So, what happens is this seems so obvious. This geometry is easy. Because this angle is bigger than this angle, right? Then it's obvious this side has to be bigger than this side. Can you see it? It has to be. Because this angle is bigger than this angle, then we know that this side is bigger than this side. And then the opposite of that is, says just the opposite, okay? If I know two sides are equal, if this side's equal to this side, and this side's equal to this side, so two sides are equal. But if I know the opposite sides, this ang if this side's bigger than this side, then this is a longer side, right? So it means this angle is going to be bigger than that angle. There's a lot of geometry. It's pretty obvious, right? Now, that's the hinge theorem. I don't want to write it down because it's in your book. So let's take a look at it. Thank you, Derek. Here's my example, okay? So right off the bat, what do you know? What do you know? Two triangles. I know two triangles. But tell me what you know about, tell me what you know about these two sides, about XW and ST. They're not equal. Which one's bigger? Which one's bigger? Take a look at it. You guys, everybody can do this. Which one's bigger? This one. XW is bigger. Agree? It even looks bigger. So we can just say, well, that's pretty obvious. I know that XW has to be greater than ST. It has to be. Okay? Bigger angle, opposite sides, has to be bigger also. Okay? Now, Example 4 is just the opposite. Example 4 says this. Okay, that side's equal to that side, that side's equal to that side, right? Now, here's what I know. 12 is longer than 9, so therefore angle C has to be bigger than angle F. Doesn't this seem obvious? If you're with me, right? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Angle C has to be larger or greater than angle F. Okay, not hard. Thumbs up, two thumbs up. Is this side. Mr. Davies, this is obvious stuff. That's why we don't do a lot of geometry. We will from here on out. So the algebra is the hard stuff, Too right? Many really? Okay, now, let's take a look at example five. If I look at example five, right? Two triangles. Okay, I've got two triangles, right? And I know that they both share this side. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the angles I'm looking at have to be the angles in between. 
So this side is equal to this side, and this side in this triangle is equal to the, okay, it's a little tricky, but check it out. This side right here, this side here, I'll highlight it, is shared by both. So it's got to be equal for both triangles, right? I mean, I could draw the triangles out if you want me to. Unless one is visibly larger than the other one, like equal because there's an equation on the other two. Well, yeah, we're actually not going to make them equal. We're going to make them one bigger than the other, okay? All right, so let me, I can even draw the triangles out if you want me to, but you've got my, let me go ahead and make my blue triangle. See my blue triangle? And I'll make my, like, red triangle. Do I have a red? I had a red marker. Oh, I'll do an orange, okay? Okay. And my, okay. Okay, you guys see my two triangles? I've got orange or red, I'll call it red, red and blue, okay? Now, here's what I know. 84 degrees, right? and 32 degrees, or is that 37? 37 degrees, okay? Here's what I know. It won't matter, but let's call it two, it won't matter. Here's what I know, and it seems obvious. Isn't this side, isn't 6x minus 16? Isn't that bigger than x plus 14? Yeah. So it says write an inequality, so let's just say, okay, I can do that. 6x minus 16 has to be greater than x plus 14, right? This side has to be bigger than this side. It even looks bigger, doesn't it? So I wrote an inequality, okay? It's wrong. Now let's solve it. Can you solve it? Sure. Minus x, minus x, 5x minus 16 is greater than 14, plus 16, plus 16, 5x is greater than 30, divide by 5, x has to be greater than 6. Now let's think about what I have. Let's use some brains. Let's use some brains, okay? So, think about this, really quick, super easy. If x were 0, if x were 0, tell me what happened. If x were 0, just think about it. If x were 0, what, what would this side be here? 16. And what would this side be here? 14. How can this side be bigger than this side? It can't, right? So we have to have values of x that force it to be bigger. Is that a good example? So, x is, if x equals 6, then they'd be equal size, but they're not. So. 7, 8, 9, 10, plugs in for x will always make this side bigger than this. Now we've got another dilemma. We've got another dilemma, okay? And that is this. One more dilemma, and that is this. A side can't be negative. I just said if x is 0, we got a problem, right? x can't be 0. Why not? Because you can't have a side be negative, right? So I want to make sure that my 6x minus 16 is greater than 0 so they don't have negative sides. So... I'm going to make sure that this side is never 0. It's got to be bigger than 0, so I solve that. I've got 6x is greater than 16. If I divide, get x is greater than 16, 6, or 8 thirds. Okay, so I get two parts, okay? x has got to be bigger than 16, 6, and it's got to be greater than 6, okay? Does that make some sense? Uh, but, but this one's already bigger, so we'll just take the x is greater than 6. That's not the example I want. I'll get a better example later, okay? Let me stop this, and I'll find one in our journal that's a better example than that, okay? Well, when, when you just keep 6 and 6? Yeah. Because it's smaller than 6. Right. But, but that would, wouldn't make this one bigger than this yeah. one. That's the problem. So I'm yeah, let me get a better example. Shoot, I'm going to have to go back and rewrite this worksheet, because that's not a very good example. Yeah. Okay, so let me see. What's the one I'm looking Wait, for? Not, Let's take a look at our homework because I've got that a good one. I think on homework. Homework? Yay! Wow, already on homework? Yeah. You still recording? I mean, there is only 15 minutes. When are we out of here? Uh, 15 minutes. Yeah, we got plenty of time. And you are still recording. Am I really? Oh man. Bye, world. <laughs>